Hi, I'm Ted from Everything Attachments, and we're today with our new rake-style grapple. Now, the difference between a rake-style grapple and a brush grapple mainly is the front tines are more like rippers, like would be on a dozer or on a box blade or something, simply for ripping through the ground, getting to the roots easier than what's on a uh, the other grapple, which is a very long tine, and it does have about a six or eight inch space that it can get through the roots and so forth uh, on the root grapples, and they're great for brush, and that's probably the most popular grapple. But we also get a lot of call for a rake style grapple where you can rake through the ground, get up bigger roots, push with bigger tractors. This is, um, it's not really our compact version. I'm just going to call it our small version because we are going to have a larger version, which will be for a skid steer. But we've engineered this similar to the Bradco compact, but we've made it a little taller. We've changed some geometries. We've made some steel thicker. Um, because it's closer to the tractor, we're able to add, get away with adding a little bit of weight uh, so it won't kill the lift of the, the compact tractors. Most of what you're going to be doing, you're going to use the force of the weight of your tractor going through the ground with the bottom rippers and then being able to, to load what you've got um, like a grapple. Now this grapple will open much wider. It opens to about 36 inches. The Bradco grapple only opens to 30 inches and we'll go over that when we get to the cylinder geometry. We're going to rate this for up to a 7,500 pound tractor or a 2,500 pound lift capacity. Somewhere in there, um, a small skid steer uh, shouldn't have any problem with it. We've increased a lot of the thicknesses on this from 3 8 on the Bradco to half inch. We're also using an A572 material, which is twice as, uh, got twice the t tensile strength of like A36, uh, and just has some better properties of, uh, you know, for the different things that it does, grappling, not twisting, and flexing, and so forth. Um, we've, we've used a common pin design instead of the two short pins, making it much stronger. Uh, we've guarded the hoses really good. We'll show you on the back. Um, we've kept all the tines half inch in thickness. As of right now, we're only going to make it in two widths, and that's a 60 and a 72. Um, Bradco does make it in a 66, but it simply adds another tine that's only three inches away from the outer tine, and for a tractor, it's going to make it harder to push it through the ground. The more tines you put on it, simply the harder it is to push through the ground. So we want the, uh, you know, the 30 horsepower tractors to still be able to use this and still be able to penetrate the ground and get the roots out and then let it go on up to the 75 horsepower tractors, you know, 7,500 pounds pounds, whatever like that should be fine with this grapple. We will make a bigger one that will hold more capacity and be designed for skid steers later. So, <clears throat> and we've got some really good pictures of this on the on our page for this. This shows the grapple fully open and what you'll find with that six inches of extra grapple, instead of the bottom kind of looking like that and the top still down, we're able to bring the top to where it's almost vertically flat in the middle. So that helped a lot. We're using an industrial cylinder with six inches of stroke instead of five like the Bradco does. So that lets us do two things. It lets us open it up further and close it further. So you get a better pinch on your stuff. You're able, when you're in just pure brush, you're able to open it up wider and get more of a push into it, more of a grab. And from this pin to this pin, we've increased the distance about an inch. And that's going to give you about 20% more clamping power. So we've got more power clamping. We've got more opening. We've got thicker metal. And we're rating it to go on larger stuff. And it's still light enough because it's close to the front of the tractor, unlike a root grapple, which goes out about another foot. You know, we're able to keep the weight close to the tractor where it shouldn't be a problem. Now, 
instead of the, um, the, the hoses on the Bradco and a lot of the others I see come out the back, and those fittings are really vulnerable to get hit, we've come out the side, we've put a plate right here, so it completely covers every bit of the cylinder, every bit of the hoses, so nothing can get back there to the cylinder from this side. So we did finally put in a CNC lathe, so now... On these pins here, we do drill the, drill the pin to the center, drill a hole in the middle of it, countersink the grease fitting where it can't get knocked off and you can grease it. And this top fitting should definitely be greased because there's a lot of movement up here and you're far out of the dirt so that you shouldn't be down in the dirt. Now down here on this particular one, it was a prototype and it was a mistake. It does have a greased fitting. The ones that come out should not have a grease fitting because you don't want grease down here where the dirt is because then it just holds the dirt and sits there and just grinds more and more. So you, what, what dirt does get there, there's nothing you can do about it. Adding grease just keeps it there. So we're not going to put a grease pin in the bottom. <clears throat> now, we've put a nice hook on the back side of this for back dragging, and that's why I know you're going to end up with dirt there. So when you get on a hard route or something and you're backing up, you can catch it with that hook right there, probably tear it out of the ground. We've kept all of the hitch pieces, and we do also offer the standard John Deere hitch for the uh, 200 through 400 series loaders that have the two hooks at the top and the dowel pin at the bottom with the linch pin. We've already got that designed, so we're ready for that. There's no extra charge at everything attachments for the John Deere hitch. That's already done. But we kept everything half inch. We've gusseted the underneath of the main plate where your wedge pin goes. We've gusseted this top plate, which is still half inch, with the main gusset from the uh, pin holder here and put another one over on this side. It'll come standard with 44 inch hoses with ag couplers. You get one male, one female. That's what goes on all of our one touch or electric over hydraulic kits, auxiliary hydraulics to go to the front. If you need different couplers, we can do that. If for some reason you need more hose length, all you have to do is tell us, we'll do that for you also. If you're using a factory um, Kubota one-touch kit or auxiliary hydraulics and they come down on the right-hand side of the boom and don't come to the center of the torque tube, then you're going to need longer hoses, about a foot more. So let us know that that's what you've got so we know to, to put the longer hoses on there for you. What we've done, we've put on the, on the Bradco grapple, and we love Bradco products, so we're not going to down their product. But what we've done, uh, Bradco had a stop on the grapple when it was fully closed. We've put a stop when it's closed and open, so it's not bottoming out in the cylinder in either direction. Because a lot of the times when the grapple is open, and it's called a rake, you're going to lean this whole grapple down. So when you've got this fully open, you can see that it makes a nice slight curve here, unlike it would if it were six inches down further. Right here is the stop for when the tube, for when the, when the lid is all the way down. And that's going to bottom out and leave about an eighth of an inch on the cylinder where it's not bottoming out. And we've welded an extra pad on the tube to keep from collapsing the tube. So we've got a really nice opening here. And then so when you roll this rake over, you've got these nice notches here. They're laser cut. They're sharp. They're going to help pull back your debris so you can get to it to grab it. Okay, so what we did right here was when we designed this, this piece right here, which is your rake tine, we, this piece right here to right here underneath the cylinder, it's flat. It's flat when it hits this tube. So when it was fully open like I was just holding it, and, and that's when, you, when you're going to have as much pressure raking backwards uh, on the cylinder or the stop, in this case it's going to be the stop, than you will when you're closing it. So what we did was, this is a flat area here, and it's going to hit a tube that's hollow. So since there's so much pressure, and we're going to rate this up to a 75 horsepower tractor or a 2,500 pound lift, this has a chance that it could push the tube in. 
So what we did was, before this outer tine was put on, we cut a piece that fits exactly inside this tube, and we slid it down to exactly where this bottoms out. So there is a solid piece welded inside this main tube here to keep that tube from collapsing. So when we engineer our products at Everything Attachments, we try to look at everything we can and just make it better than what the competitors have. So we've got a good stop on the front, and it also has a, a plate in front of it to keep from crushing the tube. And where this hits, we didn't want to put a plate because it's close to this cylinder here. So the, the best way to do it, to make it just like it's on a solid piece, was to countersink a piece that fits directly inside the tube and weld it in there. So it's just like hitting a solid block. So it shouldn't collapse the tube or move in any way, either direction where it can damage the cylinder. So I think every, everything about that is just better. This is half inch. Your point right here, that point is out of an AR, which is an abrasion resistant 400 material. It has a 400 tensile strength, so it's super strong and it's wear resistant. That's what the AR is, abrasion resistance. So that is welded on the end of this. Should last a long time because it's a very expensive metal. It's very hard. And we also, from the, from the tube here out, to make it one inch wide instead of half inch wide like the tine, we laminated another piece right beside of it that goes down underneath that tooth. So you do have a full one inch support from the tooth all the way back to the front tube, making everything stronger. Okay, so on the back, we put on a 3 16th thick hose saver here, uh, a, a, a guard that's welded all the way on the front here, protects your hoses from everything from the front, and then your hoses come up the side here, and as you can see, they're protected all the way. The plate comes all the way over to here. The hoses come in behind here, go up under here. There is a fitting here, so if you need to replace them, you're not gonna have to route all your hoses all through there. You would simply undo your number six connection right here and unhook it. So, and every, this, this grapple actually took a lot longer to design than I thought because I didn't know we were going to make so many changes. We actually widened the top and bottom here because we're using a longer cylinder, which just gives you more grab, and you've got the more opening, you've got a further closing, you've got the more leverage here because you've got more stroke on your cylinder. Everything about this grapple is just better in my opinion. We're using A572 steel, and it's 25% cheaper than the grapple we were selling from Bradco. Because you're buying direct from the manufacturer, that's us, we send it directly to you, no dealers, no distributors, you know, no, no sales pamphlets that have to be sent out to every dealership every year, sales books to all the dealers. There's just so many things where we can give you a better product for less money, and get it delivered to you, and just, it's a better deal. So give us a call at Everything Attachments. We'll help size this for your machine, and anything else you need, just give us a call or an email. We'll be happy to help you.